I have a semiconductor and what I've done is I've added dopants atoms to it. So I've added, let's say, ND number of donors and I've also added an A number of acceptors. So now how many number of electrons and holes do I have in my semiconductor? So let's see what happens if I add a donor. So if I add a donor and that donor atom ionizes, so it it gives away an extra electron that it had to the lattice and it leaves behind a positively charged donor atom if this donor atom ionizes. Similarly, a, a, a acceptor atom, if it ionizes, it accepts a electron from the lattice, so it leaves away a vacancy or it leaves a positively, uh, positively charged hole in the lattice and also it generates a negatively charged acceptor atom which is uh, which is not mobile and which is fixed so how do i find the number of number of electrons and holes in my semiconductor so let's let's start with you know something which is which seems like reasonable so let me write down you know what can i expect so the first thing i can expect is what i call as charge neutrality so that is if i'm adding adding donors and acceptors to my semiconductor these donors and acceptor are essentially neutral species they if they give away an electron they also leave away a positively charged uh, positively charged donor or similarly this acceptor if it generates the hole it also leaves away a, a negatively charged acceptor atom and this semiconductor if it was intrinsic or if i had not added any dopant atom this was also neutral so if i add add donor or acceptor it's i'm hoping you know it it remains neutral so what i can write is the condition for charge neutrality so i can say that the total positive charge i have is equal to the total negative charge i have so let's see what what's the total total positive charge i can have so the total positive charge i can have is that i can have holes and I can, if, if I add uh, donor atoms and they ionize, so this, they'll leave behind this positively charged doper, donor atom. So this is also adds to my positively positive charge. And that what is the total number of negative charge I have? So if I have electrons, they will, each electron will add uh, one negative charge. So if I have n electrons, I have uh, n uh, negatively charged uh, uh, number of negative charges. Similarly, if my acceptor atom ionizes, it will leave behind a negatively charged, negatively charged atom in the lattice. So this is my total amount of negative charge. And what I'll further assume is that I have what I'll further assume is I'll assume complete ionization of these, complete ionization of these, of these atoms. And what that means is that I'll assume that if I'm adding donor atoms, so if I'm adding, if I'm adding ND number of donors, all of them will ionize and they'll produce ND plus number of, uh, ND plus number of positively charged atoms and, you know, equivalent number of electrons. Similarly, I'll assume complete ionization of my acceptor atoms as well. So I can rewrite this, rewrite this condition. And what I'll assume is that ND plus is equivalent to nd similarly what i'll assume is that na minus is equal to na so i can rewrite this equation and what i'll say is p plus nd is equal to n plus na sorry this should have been i should write my a better so this is my this is my this is my a which was looking like a d so <clears throat> so what's the other condition I can write? So I can use this big, big law that we derived in the, derived in the last, uh, you know, previously in the, one of the videos, that is the law of mass action. And we saw this, this law of mass action, which is a very important law, which says that the product of my, product of my electrons and holes, it remains constant and is equivalent to the square of the intrinsic carrier density in my semiconductor. So 
now if i if i need to solve for n and p i have two of equations so this is my equation number one and this is my equation number two so i have two variables and i have two equations so let's you know it's uh it's uh it looks like you know it's a binomial equation so i can sub let me solve for n first so let me find out how many number of electrons i have so i'll replace for p in this equation and uh, i'll replace i'll take p express it in the in the, in the form of number of electrons and then then replace it in this equation so i have this equation which says p plus nd is equal to n plus na so i can say i can subtract nd from both sides i can subtract nd from both sides and i'm left with p is equal to plus na minus nd so now i can do is take this value of p and substitute as in it into this equation so it becomes n times n plus n capital n a minus capital n d is equal to n i square so now this is a quadratic equation in terms of n so let me collect all the term which has n square which is this n multiplied by this n plus all the terms which have n which is this n a minus n d so this coefficient is capital n a minus n d times n and then i have the constant term which is minus n i square which is minus n i square so now this is a quadratic equation so it has that form a x square plus b x plus c equal to zero so the solution of this solution for this is n equal to minus b which in this case is n minus of n a minus n d plus minus b square minus 4ac which in this case is n a minus n d square and minus times 4 a is 1 and c is minus n i square so it becomes plus 4 n i square and whole thing under the square root and divided by 2 so you know let's let's rewrite it in a little more little more uh, coherent way so i can instead of writing minus n a minus n d by 2 i can write n d minus n a by 2 and then i can take this 2 inside this square root so it becomes a it becomes a 4 and i can you know further rewrite this as plus minus so I can I'm trying to generate similar looking terms inside and outside N D minus N A square plus N I square. Now we know that the total number of number of num so I can ha I can have this positive term and I can have this negative term. And if I look at this negative term, this is bigger than what's out here. And I know that the total number of electrons cannot be you know definitely negative otherwise you know that doesn't make any sense so this negative term will be negative term will be ruled out of this equation so that the final formula that i get for my number of electrons is equal to n d minus n a by 2 plus n d minus n a square of that plus n i square and i can do the same exercise for the number of holes and you know you can uh, repeat that and you know follow the same steps but all that happens is that instead of nd the position of this nd and na is replaced otherwise the formula otherwise that the formula looks pretty much the same so the number of holes i have is is this plus n a minus n d square plus n i square and you can further see that if i multiply this equation multiply these these two these two terms i further get n p equal to n i square so that's you know that's another another kind of a checkpoint that these formulas are are correct so i get these you know these these formulas for the number of number of uh, 
uh, electrons and holes I have. But these are still, you know, these are still uh, not very easy to comprehend. So let me for simplify this further. So I can simplify this further by assuming that I can simplify this further for a few cases. So I can assume that, let me assume that the number of donors minus the number of acceptors is much larger than the intrinsic carrier density. So let's say maybe I'm adding, maybe I'm adding 10 to power 15 donors and I'm only adding 10 to power 12 acceptors. And my intrinsic carrier density for a semiconductor uh, like silicon is 10 to power 10. So in that case, how many number of electrons do I get? So I get a term of Nd minus Na by 2 from here, and then I can ignore this term. So I get another Nd minus Na by 2 term from here. So overall, the total number of electrons I get is essentially equal to Nd minus Na. And what is the number of holes I have? So the number of holes I have, I can calculate by using the law of mass action and I can say the number of holes I have is equal to Ni squared divided by Nd minus Na. And this is going to be much larger than Ni squared because Nd minus Na is much greater than Ni. So I have a overall n-type doped semiconductor and for that I can simply write my number of electrons and holes by using this formula. Now I can further simplify this also if I have the opposite condition. So if I have Na minus Nd is much greater than Ni squared. If that is the case, I will have a much more number of acceptor atoms and uh, now subtraction of this concentration of acceptor and donors is greater than uh, greater than uh, Ni. And in that case, in, in that case, I can write down the number of holes I have. So I can write down the number of holes I have using this formula. So I'll get uh, Na minus Nd by 2 term from here. And inside this term, this term, the Nd minus this term would be much greater than much greater than this term. So I'll get another Na minus Nd by 2 from there. So the total number of holes I have is I'll get as Na minus Nd. And correspondingly, I can write that the number of electrons I have is equal to Ni square divided by the concentration of holes, which is Na minus Nd. So I can I can simplify this formula further for the case when I have Nd minus Na greater than Ni, or I have Na minus Nd greater than Ni.